Since 2016, we made over 500 Nixie clocks, and from time to time, one of the clocks fails. I started first experiments with Nixie tube manufacture in 2011, and since then, the hobby turned into a kind of obsession. I've been staring into that orange glow pretty much every day, and they still fascinate me. If you ever try building something with Nixie tubes, then maybe you know what I'm talking about. With help of many people from the community around Nixie tubes, I somehow managed to start a small scale manufacture. It's really small, we make around 10 tubes per day in a team of 7 people. When people ask me about my job, I can describe it as bringing Nixie tubes back to life. This expression became our motto. Our job is to find second life for Nixie tubes. We have to arrange things so that the obsolete technology of Nixie tubes can exist in our modern world. Nixie tubes will never come back as a mainstream mass-produced display technology, but I believe they can stay as an unusual form of art. This is only possible with a product of the highest quality. For this reason, I take every product failure seriously. We search for the root cause of the problem and make design changes so that failure never happens again. Today I have here four clocks for analysis. These clocks were collected from customers in last six months. We have here a clock from Tang from USA. It doesn't light up the Nixie tubes. We have here a clock from Sean from South Africa. It has a weak Wi-Fi signal reception. Another clock from Martin from Czech Republic restarts itself several times a day. And finally a clock which we are going to analyze today is a clock from Jérôme from France. This clock has stuck digit 2, which is permanently on, on the Nixie tube, which is on the right. But before I open Jérôme's clock, I want to show you an example of information or knowledge what we are looking for. A year ago, a customer reported that one of the tubes in his clock is not showing number 2 anymore. After analysis of the electronics board, I found that it was a failure of a VIA in a track connection the digit 2 to the rest of the electronics. The digit could not be controlled anymore by the microprocessor. Here just a short explanation of what is VIA. VIA is a connection between tracks on different layers of a PCB. It brings the electric signal from one side of the board to another. Soon after that I found another faulty VIA in a clock. This time, fortunately, we caught this clock in testing before we actually shipped it to the customer. I searched for information about VIA failures, hoping that I can find some ways how to prevent this type of failure and I actually found some interesting articles. The most common failure mechanism of VIA is barrel fatigue. It's a situation when the copper layer in the barrel cracks and the VIA is no longer electrically conductive. It doesn't transfer the electric signal from one side to another anymore. The most important factor regarding durability of VIA is ratio of its length, of length of the barrel and diameter of the hole. 
The smaller number, the better. PCB manufacturers have different equipment and different manufacturing processes, so it is necessary to check their technical capabilities before you send them your design. They usually have a page with technical specifications like minimal distance between tracks, between pads and many more. Our board design was perfectly within capabilities of our manufacturer, but the VIA failed anyway. So I started searching for a way how to make the VIAs better. The most reliable and recommended way was decreasing the ratio between drilling diameter and length of the hole. We could either decrease thickness of the board or increase the drilling diameter. Our boards are quite thick. We use thick boards because they provide good mechanical support for the tubes. So instead of decreasing thickness of the board, we rather decrease diameter of the drilling hole. Since we increased diameter of our vias, we haven't had a single failure in any of our clocks. So. It was a lesson learned and as a result our electrical designs are now more robust. Ok, so let's get back to our clock. Jerome reported that the rightmost Nixie tube shows digit number 2 permanently. After opening the clock I found that the digit 2 is shorted to ground. When you short a digit to a ground, you close the circuit so that the current can flow through the digit and it makes the digit glow. Here you can see that the solder around pin socket is damaged. There are some bursts from solder which broke through the solder mask and connected the pin to the ground plane under solder mask. This damage most likely happened when inserting a tube into a clock. The pin slipped off the socket and hit the solder joint and it caused a small damage which was unnoticed. After some time in operation the burst created fully conductive path and the digit went on permanently. The problem in this case was the ground plane. The clearance between the pin socket and the ground plane was enough for reliable electrical insulation, but it didn't count with mechanical damage. The solution would be easy, we would normally increase the clearance, but in this case things went a bit different. Jerome's clock was older revision 1.4 with ground plane both on the bottom and top. Sebastian later made a revision 1.4 with several improvements and he kept the ground plane only on bottom of the board. The board revision 1.4 is already resistant to similar mechanical damage caused by pins of the tube. Since 2018 I'm honored to share the lab with Sebastian. Sebastian is an electronic engineer from Germany. He liked the idea of contributing to Nixie tube development. So after graduation he decided to come from Germany to Czech Republic and to work for us for one year. The main project he's been working on is a new burning machine. I will talk about this machine later. When you work on a bigger project there are often times when you wait for parts to come or for some other things to happen and to fill these voids while waiting for parts for his project to come Sebastian revisited the clock boards which I designed and introduced some improvements in case of Puri clock it was especially faster and more sensitive and more reliable over voltage protection, polarity protection and over current protection better layout of current flow on the board he moved positive and ground tracks next to each other and he eliminated this way loops which produced some weak magnetic fields this had slightly positive effect on Wi-Fi signal reception and probably also on emission of electromagnetic interferences Already the previous design passed the EMI limits, but having lower emissions is always better. One of the improvements regarding current paths was merging top and bottom ground plane to one. We kept just the bottom one. As a side effect, this change also made the design resistant to mechanical damage, which we discovered in the first faulty clock from Jerome. 
Another improvement was switching from two-layer board design to three layers. We added one inside layer for all the tracks between Nixie tubes and the high voltage driver. This was necessary for merging the ground planes. With so many tracks between Nixie tubes, it was difficult to avoid shattering the ground plane into small pieces which were difficult to connect. And finally, last reason, we wanted to make the board more aesthetical. There is now a minimum of tracks visible on top layer and the board looks very clean and minimalistic. We especially love the connection of the pin sockets. There are no tracks connecting them visible. They are all hidden in the inside layer. This makes the board a bit mysterious. As you can see, we use thick board. We use 2.4 millimeters instead of standard 1.6 millimeter. This is mainly because we use the board as a mechanical support for our tubes. The standard thickness would provide enough support, but when we tried it and you pressed on the tube a bit, the board would bend slightly and the overall feeling from it was flimsy, was springy and not, not very rigid. With 2.4 millimeters, we have perfectly rigid board, which reliable supports the tubes in a clock and it makes a really nice feeling when you touch it. Thank <laughs> you. 